Hey there, I'm James, you're watching Accounting Stuff, and in this video, we'll go over the cash flow statement for beginners. A cash flow statement is a financial statement that summarizes a business's cash inflows and outflows over a period of time. We'll get into how that works in a moment, but first, why do we need a cash flow statement? In accounting, there are two main methods for preparing your books, the cash method and the accrual method. With the cash method, you recognize your revenue when cash is received and you record your expenses when cash is paid out. But under the accrual method, you recognize revenue as it's earned and record your expenses as they are incurred. So what does that mean? If you're cash accounting, then technically you only have one financial statement, the income statement. It summarizes your revenues and expenses over a period of time, leaving you with a profit or a loss. But with the cash method, we said that you recognize revenue when cash is received and you record expenses when cash is paid out. That leaves you with a net cash inflow or an outflow. So the income statement prepared under the cash method is equivalent to a cash flow statement. Keep that in mind, we'll come back to it later. Plenty of small businesses do their books this way, which is fine, but the cash method isn't allowed under IFRS or GAAP. If you're following either of these, then you must use the accrual method. So revenue must be recognized as it's earned and expenses must be recorded as they are incurred. In accrual accounting, we still have the income statement, but this time it represents what a business has earned and incurred, not its cash inflows and outflows. So it's not equivalent to a cash flow statement. So businesses using the accrual method keep a separate cash flow statement alongside their income statement and they also keep a balance sheet which holds their assets, their liabilities and their equity. Not long ago, I made videos covering the income statement and the balance sheets. You can find links to both of those down in the description. What is a cash flow statement? At the start, I said it summarizes a business's cash inflows and outflows over a period of time. But what does it look like? We begin with the opening cash amount at the start of the period and compare it against the closing cash amount at the end of the period. You can find both of these numbers in the balance sheet. The movement between the two is the net increase or decrease in cash. And once we know that, then we can get onto the real purpose of the cash flow statement, explaining how we ended up here. There are three main sections, cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. Operating activities are the main revenue generating activities of the business. These are the cash flows involved in selling goods or services. Investing activities sit outside of the business's core operations. They involve the buying or selling of investments or other long-term assets. And finally, financing activities relate to funding the business through raising or repaying cash to third-party banks or the owners of the business. This, my friends, is the basic structure of the cash flow statement. Positive numbers represent cash inflows and negative numbers are cash outflows. Now, there are a couple of ways to make a detailed cash flow statement. We can use the direct method or the indirect method. We'll start with the direct method. Cash flow from operating activities under the direct method mirrors the income statement prepared under the cash method, which we saw earlier. At the top, we have cash receipts from customers, which mirrors revenue. And then we have the cash paid out to suppliers and employees, and then interest and taxes paid. Collectively, these mirror the business's expenses. Cash flow from investing activities includes cash outflows from buying investments or other long-term assets, and the cash inflows that come with selling them. Cash flow from financing activities relates to the raising or repaying of cash or capital. There are two ways a business can do this, using liabilities or equity. They can borrow money from a third party bank, which would increase their liabilities, or a business can look to its owners, its shareholders, who can make capital contributions, which increase equity. On the flip side, they also make loan repayments back to the bank and distribute dividends back to the owners. When we add up the net cash flows from operating, investing and financing activities, we can reconcile the net increase or decrease in cash 
back to the movement in the balance sheet. Now, how does the indirect method work? The only section that changes is cash flow from operating activities. We use three steps to work it out. The indirect method always begins with the net profit or loss from the income statement. Then in step two, we add back all the non-cash expenses that appear above it. These don't represent cash outflows and they need to be reversed out. The usual suspects are depreciation and amortization and any gain or loss on the sale of non-current assets or long-term assets. Finally, we adjust for the movement in working capital. Working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. Increases in current assets like inventory or receivables reduce cash flow, whereas increases in current liabilities like payables increase cash flow. You can find all of these numbers on the comparative balance sheet. Now you're probably thinking that the direct method sounds a lot easier. Why don't we just use that? You're right, it is easier to read, but it's actually harder for accountants to prepare. So we don't use it as much. The indirect method is much, much easier to work out because we can find a lot of these numbers in the income statement and the balance sheet, as you'll see in this next example. I realized that there's a lot going on here. So I've put together two cheat sheets covering the direct and the indirect cash flow statement. I like to think of them as one page reference guides to help you out. If you'd like to support the channel, then you're welcome to buy them on my website. The link as usual is up here and down there. How do we make a cash flow statement? Yes, it's time for that example and we'll be using the indirect method because it's easier. We'll need a couple of things to get started. First, we need an income statement. Here's one for a business called Tumble, which is a fictional dating app. We actually made this one from nothing in the income statement video, so check that out and maybe click subscribe as well. It summarizes Tumble's revenues and expenses for the year ended December 31st. And here's Tumble's balance sheet, which we made in the balance sheet video. It shows us a snapshot of their assets, liabilities, and equity at the end of the year. But hold on, we're using the indirect method, so we actually need to see last year's balance sheet as well. So this is Tumble's comparative balance sheet. We have the current year one on the left and last year's one on the right. Nice, one more thing before we begin. Here are some key facts which happened during the year. Tumble sold some furniture for $10,000, which originally cost them $20,000 and had been depreciated by 5,000. The loss on the sale was charged to general and admin expenses. Tumble also spent $910,000 on computer equipment they raised $100,000 in long-term debt and made no repayments. And finally, they issued $50,000 in common stock and paid out $1 million in dividends. Righto, let's begin. What are we reconciling? Cash. This is a cash flow statement after all, so let's head over to Tumble's comparative balance sheet. We can see that they held $13,895,000 in cash at the end of last year and this number increased to $17 million at the end of this year. So we can lift these numbers and place them at the bottom of our indirect cash flow statement. Overall, that's a net increase in cash of $3,105,000. But how did Tumble pull this off? Let's find out. We'll start with cash flow from operating activities. In step one, we need to find Tumble's net profit or loss for the current year. That's easy, we can get it from the income statement. On the bottom line, we can see that Tumble earned $9,650,000 this year from their core operations. We'll take Tumble's net profit and put it right at the top of cash flow from operating activities. Step two, we need to reverse out all of the non-cash expenses. Non-cash expenses appear above the bottom line in the income statement. Some classic examples are depreciation and amortization. These represent the gradual process of writing off long-term assets. They aren't cash flows. This year, Tumble incurred $850,000 in non-cash expenses. So we'll add this back in our cash flow from operating activities. But that's not all. Tumble made a loss on the sale of long-term assets. If we jump back to our key facts page, we said that they sold some furniture for $10,000. So let's quickly do some workings. This furniture originally cost Tumble $20,000, 
and by the time it was sold, it had incurred $5,000 in depreciation, leaving it with a carrying value of $15,000. Tumble sold this furniture for $10,000, which left them with a loss on the sale of $5,000. This is also a non-cash expense, and it was charged to general and admin expenses in the income statement. We need to reverse it out in our cash flow statement. So we'll add back a loss on the sale of furniture of $5,000. Step three, we need to adjust for the movement in Tumble's working capital. Working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. Ignoring cash, current assets are typically made up of inventory and receivables, and current liabilities are payables. We can find the movement in all of these on Tumble's comparative balance sheet. It doesn't look like Tumble has any inventory, but they do have some receivables. Accounts receivable, other receivables, and prepaid expenses, which add up to $14,050,000 in the current year, and $8,850,000 last year. That's an increase in receivables of $5.2 million during the year. An increase in receivables reduces cash flow. So we subtract $5.2 million from cash flow from operating activities. I like to think of it this way. If receivables have gone up, then Tumble is owed more money, which isn't good for cash flow. Payables work in a similar way. Tumble has accounts payable, taxes payable, accrued expenses, and some deferred revenue. All of this adds up to $14.4 million in payables in the current year. And last year, they had $14 million $850,000 in payables. That's a year-on-year -year decrease in payables of $450,000. We subtract decreases in payables under cash flow from operating activities. Because if payables go down, then more supplier accounts have been settled. So there's less cash. When we take Tumble's profit, add back their non-cash expenses, and adjust for the movement in working capital, then we can see that they had a net cash inflow of $4,855,000 from operating activities. A couple more things we need to do here to finish this off. But first, I'd like to say a big thanks to all my channel supporters. You guys motivate me to keep on making more accounting tutorials. If you'd like to sign up, then you can click the join button. Next up is cash flow from investing activities. We're done with operating activities, so the rest of the cash flow statement is the same, whether you're using the direct or the indirect method. On our key facts page, we can see that Tumble spent $910,000 on computer equipment. This is a cash outflow from investing activities because they bought long-term assets, but Tumble also sold a long-term asset. Remember that furniture we talked about? Tumble made a loss on its sale, which we called a non-cash expense. We added it back in cash flow from operating activities but we also need to record the cash receipt on the sale of $10,000. This sale isn't part of Tumble's core business, so we record it as a cash flow from investing activities. When we total it against the purchase of computer equipment, that leaves us with a net cash flow from investing activities of $900,000. This time it's a cash outflow, so the number's negative. Cash flow from financing activities. Financing activities involve raising or repaying cash or capital used to fund a business. On the key facts page, we can see that Tumble raised $100,000 in long-term debt. This is a liability to a third-party bank, and this year they made no debt repayments. They issued $50,000 in common stock, which is a capital contribution from the shareholders who own the business, which increases equity, and they paid $1 million out in dividends back to the shareholders, that would have decreased their equity. We can pull all these numbers through into cash flow from financing activities. Tumble received $100,000 in cash from long-term debt, they raised another $50,000 in equity, and they paid out $1 million in dividends. So that's a net cash outflow from financing activities of $850,000, almost there. When we total the cash flows from operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities, we can see that Tumble had a net increase in cash of $3,105,000 during the year. 
This matches the movement in cash that we saw in the balance sheet. So we've reconciled this cash flow statement using the indirect method. Oh yeah. Hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next time. Bye for now.